everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh, thank you for joining me today. Today we're diving into the eight passengers world again. It's been a while since I talked about Ruby and the, and the crew, Ruby and the crew. And uh, according to this video, it's now seven passengers. <laughs> so, or Ruby Frank's daughter, I think her name is Sherry, has decided that she's done with YouTube. So I haven't seen it. Some people have obviously sent this to me because it's worth having a conversation about what's what she's about to say. If I think it's what she's about to say, it might be worth looking at the fact that why did she wait till this point to quit? And has she wanted to quit the whole time, right? We all know that Ruby Frank makes a lot of money on YouTube. Her husband is a professor at BYU, which also makes a lot of money and he's one of the worst rated teachers, <laughs> not that it matters. This family is specifically problematic for a few reasons. The way that uh, Ruby treats her kids, the rules that she has set in place, like when you're 18, peace out. Like she's she's not a very good mother. There's a ton of videos I've gotten saved up in clips about her like stopping the car in an accident saying we got in an accident but it was someone else and she grabbed her camera and she, she was so ecstatic to get out of the car and go film this accident. Just insane things. She's like, if there's any vlogger that's a wolf in sheep's clothing love meg big time but sh uh, sh um, ruby frank crazy so just want to point that out and then we're gonna get to this video but before we do that let's do some patreon dancing yeah baby <laughs> All right, <clears throat> that's the new Samson shirt, everybody. Oh, Jennifer Kaminsky. Oh, just a sticker. Sorry, Jennifer, I, I tried. Anybody, look at my shirt. Oh! <laughs> All right, Mandy Turner, this one's for you. Oh my gosh, I was close to center. Sticker, let's go. Like I said, uh, Sherry Frank is a 18 year old uh, daughter of Ruby Frank. Uh, this, again, this family is one of the most probably, this is one of the earliest families I've ever talked about. One of the things that really struck me was the leg shaving, was the absolute like absence of any privacy for their daughters. Guys, for sure. Like, we know that Chad has gone through some stuff. He was sent to a uh, re reformation camp or whatever you want to call that, or uh, what do you call it? A behavioral, I don't know. One of those camps that basically like he was too problematic and they sent him away and they had major issues with him. They made him sleep on a beanbag chair for eight months. They took off his bathroom door. Like I have teenagers, same age as this kid. And I'm like, ah, you know, I sort of, sort of get it right. I sort of get that teenagers can be crazy, but like, I feel like they have such high expectations for their children that when they don't reach those expectations, those kids get treated way differently than an, an, a normal kid in a different household, right? Also, the Mormon thing probably has a, to factor into it. Now, Chad's going on his mission. Like, they, I don't know. I don't like this family. Let's just say that. You guys know that. They put milk on cake and shit's weird. But, uh, so that's just, you know, and then there was a problem with Ruby talking about how she didn't send her five-year-old to a school with a lunch. And to, to make sure she learned her lesson, she wasn't going to bring her lunch. And the teacher was like, uh, no, you got to bring her a lunch. She's five. And Sherry, like doesn't really parent, right? Sherry's just more like a, a roommate and she uses her kids for massive amount of clickbait content. She knows that her son, Chad, gets all the hits and he does videos, getting ready and all that stuff. And she talks about her daughter's acne and the, the Accutane and have all these ads about all these things, shaving your legs for the first time, period stuff. Like it's just nasty. And of course she's connected to Bonnie Holine. And don't forget, Ruby Frank took PPP loans as well. That whole family, that whole friggin' cartel of Mormon family vloggers took, I don't even know, I'm gonna do the math on it, but it's hundreds of thousands of dollars from the government that they didn't need, because they're already wealthy. Plus, they, anyway, there's lots, but let's get to this video. So I think the title of this video is pretty self-explanatory. It's not a joke, it's for real. And there's some of you out there who might be happy by it, and that's on you, I guess. Uh I have decided to be done with YouTube 
and this is, I think, a decision that's actually been in the works for a long time, and I never wanted to look at it. So let's remember what she said there. This has been in works for a long time. Her saying that now, don't forget, she's just turned 18 or I think she's 19 or 18, something like that. She is an adult legally, but she has been saying it's been going for a long time. So that's what I hear. And what I hear there is that Ruby is kind of like, if you think about this, Ruby and the whole lines, everybody else who does all these, they force their kids to do this. Now, whether or not it's like they force them is in like, if you don't do this, you don't get the thing. Or if you don't do this, you know, they, they coerce their children into it. They say, you know, if you don't do this, we won't make any money or we won't get to go on vacation or you won't get the thing that you want. Um, and so that's, to me, one of the things when it, when it comes to child exploitation, a lot of fans of like Jess Fam and all these families will say, no, the kids love it. But you don't know that. You don't know the kids haven't been told, you gotta be on camera today, we're doing a video today, if you don't do it, we're not going to do that thing. Coercion is, is, is one of the things that makes exploitation disgusting, right? Anybody out there who's a parent who has kids knows that it's sometimes really hard to get kids to do what you want them to do. Specifically, sometimes daily or three times weekly blogs. Could you imagine? So I want to say that right off the top that she said this has been works for a long time. It sounds like she has been thinking about getting off this shit for a long time. But Ruby didn't let her. Um... And then just last night, I finally decided to. And it actually wasn't like that hard of a decision once I laid it out and realized what was going on. I think after this video, I have one more video that's edited and that'll go up. And then after that, I think I'm going to be pretty much done. Mm -hmm. I will say um, when I move into college and stuff, there will be some videos around that. Okay. <laughs> um, but then afterwards, I'll probably maybe do one a month. Um, but it's definitely so no, you're not done in YouTube. Is that what you meant to say there, Sherry? You're not done. Okay. Now again, teenager, not going to like go hard at her cause she's clearly her mom's child, but that doesn't sound like you're done on YouTube. It sounds like you're cutting way back, which is probably what you should have said. Okay. Not going to be, I guess my job anymore. I will. Oh, so she's saying, okay, I don't want to do this as a full-time gig, which thank God, right? Thank God she's going to university, going to get an education. I'm too bad it's at BYU, but you know, thank God. She's like, it's not going to be my job. I don't want this to be my job. And I think, hopefully she talks about it, but I think it's probably because she sees this world is shit. Yeah, there could be money in it, but um, like she doesn't need the money. Her parents are wealthy, right? But I'm not sure Ruby and them are going to give the, her, them give their kids any money. I'm pretty sure that Ruby has said in the past that once her kids turn 18, it's like, bye nothing for you and if that's the case that really sucks that ruby has done that because these kids have been on her vlog since they were born or whatever right they've been here for a very long time and made ruby a lot of money i hope that at least they're paying for her university and of course they put a roof over her head and fed her and they vacation and everything but there's a lot of money kind of sitting there that these kids are owed and if ruby doesn't give her kids any money from the shit that they did i'm i think that's disgusting we'll just come right out and say that I do not handle stress very well, and it's something that I'm working on, something that I'm trying to get better at. Um, but ever since I was like little, like as young as I can remember, like five years old, I would stress over things to the point that I made myself sick. Like okay, and that's crazy. To me, that sounds like, wow, right? You think about what Ruby has forced her kids to do on, on, on camera. If this girl has, is saying what she's saying, and that's pretty crazy that she's stressed herself out like crazy. Why would Ruby put this world on a kid who has a massive amount of anxiety and stress? You want to come see me? There we go. Like, why would you force this onto a, a girl who, who's admitting here that she has a massive amount of stress and anxiety? Putting someone who has that much anxiety into a world like this, I'm not going to say it's child abuse for lack of a better term. That's, that's just bad parenting. I think we can agree on that. My stomach was always hurting. We didn't know what was wrong. And kind of ever since then, my mental um, state has kind of manifested itself in a physical state. And I'm not saying that, you know, any illness that I've gotten is because I'm stressed. Um, but I think that definitely we have an effect on our mental and physical being. Like, I definitely know that they're connected. So I know a couple videos ago when I said that I was going to be filming through college, I had said that I had this goal of filming at least to the end of my high school years. So I wanted to at least be able to go to high school. Oh, by the way, this is off her channel. This is not her parents' channel. She's like, how many subscribers does she have? So this is a big deal. So Sherry, so Fra Sherry Frank has 478,000 subscribers. Holy shit. Why is her brother in the image? It's weird. Okay. 
75 million views. This girl has made hundreds of thousands of dollars off of this vlog. So, I wonder if, she, I wonder if Ruby is like, helped this channel along because that's her own money. Hopefully that's her money. Hopefully she kept it. That's a big deal to come out and say I'm done on a 478,000 subscriber. Like people would kill for a channel that big. Like she's got more subscribers than some of the big family vloggers I cover. I didn't, I didn't even know that. Graduation. And I think that's always a goal that I mentally set for myself. But looking back on it, I also think that it's something that just my gut told me. What's interesting is looking at it yesterday, I realized that as soon as like I got to my graduation, that's kind of when my stress levels went up. That's kind of when my health went down. And that's when I tried to keep pushing and doing YouTube. And I don't think that I was supposed to do that. Hey, it takes a smart kid to say my health is more important than fame and money. Like it, that's, let's be real. Sherry, this is a, this is a rarity in kids. Any kid that I know, especially mine, had a 470,000 subscriber channels making hundreds of thousands of dollars would not stop. That's like, would be very, very, very difficult to stop. Okay, but she's, she's going to be a lawyer. She wants to do all that stuff. She'd likely make good money in her, her life. Her parents are wealthy. So like, obviously the, they have a little bit more, you know, privilege than most. So that's obviously factors in, but dang, it takes a smart girl. It takes someone smart to actually, or it takes someone like, I don't know. I don't know if I could make that decision. Interestingly enough, that's when my allergies got really, really bad. That's when my stomach started hurting again. Um, my like period cramps got like worse than they've ever been ever. And again, not saying that all of that is just because of stress, but I think it was definitely amplified by that. Um, but and she's, she's connecting her stress being amplified by doing YouTube. So obviously if Ruby knew this, obviously they did. She's probably told her mom more than once that I don't like being on YouTube because it stresses me out, but Ruby doesn't give a shit. I definitely think my gut was telling me to be done with it when I graduated high school. So yesterday I was, I was talking to my parents about this and thinking about it. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall for that conversation. Um, I kind of realized that I have not been backed into a corner. Um, and that's one thing they pointed. Don't forget that's the first thing she said. They said, you're not backed into a corner right now. It's quite the opposite. You have like all these things around you that you can do and you're doing this because you're so narrow focused on this one thing, which is YouTube. And it's totally true. Like there's- Gee, where'd she get that from? Hmm, the whole family doing YouTube maybe? Maybe the fact that they've been groomed and bred on this channel, seven years of her life, eight years of her life on this channel. Where do you think she gets that tunnel vision from there, Ruby? Are you shitting me right now? So many other things that I want to do so many other things that I can do, and I just have refused to look at it because I've always seen YouTube as my job, and even though I haven't liked it, I've- This is where I, I'm glad she said that. I'm glad she said that. Where does she get that idea from? Right? She hears her parents talking about it. She hears the money. She sees the vacations. She sees the lap, the lap of luxury they live in. She sees that because her parents have told her that that's where you should do it. The same is true with Just Fam. All these people are like, I want this for my kids. I want this for my kids. I want them to live rich lives on YouTube. <sighs> but in the end, look what she's doing. She's making a choice to say, look, the money's not, I'd rather not be, have the money coming in from YouTube. And once Sherry gets off YouTube, I bet you, and she's not in her family vlogs as much anymore, she's going to feel like a free bird. I guarantee you she's gonna be like, oh my gosh, I this this world is really difficult unless you have a thick skin, okay? Really, really difficult. And a lot of these parents don't realize that some kids just don't have the thick skin, okay? I'd like to say that most kids don't have a thick skin and shouldn't anyway, right? Because how do you develop a thick skin? Through calluses. And how do you get calluses? Through being roughed up or through being pushed through, for being, you know, hardened, right? That's what that's where calluses come from. Kids shouldn't be calloused. Kids should not have thick skins. And the fact that we're putting them on, the fact that these people are putting them on the channel to put them out there to be made fun of, to be targets of predators, to like have people make fun of them for their singing or for perceived for acne, for whatever the case may be, right there. If you've been to those tattle groups, they are no holds barred. If you've been to those gossip forums, they're no holds barred for anybody on there. Kids, everybody's like fair game. And so kids should never have to be forced to be put into this world. That, that actually struck me. The kids shouldn't have to be thick skinned. They shouldn't have to deal with all this stuff. And these parents, and likely again, I'm not saying they do know that, but if they've had a conversation with their kids and they continue to do that, that's on the parents. But that's something that is often overlooked or never been talked about before, is that these kids are, are being forced to develop 
to grow up faster, develop thick skins because of their parents' selfishness. That, you know, people have jobs that they don't like and it's work. Um, you don't always like work, you just do it anyway. You know, while that can be true. Yeah, well, YouTube's, okay. I think it's gone to a whole nother extreme to the point that I don't take care of myself anymore. Um, like I've stopped wow. exercising, I've stopped eating well, always getting sick, you know, so I, that's definitely gone. I mean, part of this is like, where is Ruby in all this? Where's Ruby in the parenting process? Where's your dad in the parenting process? Why are, I mean, it feels like you're on an island. She sounds to me like she's just been like kind of left her own devices for the last few years, do whatever she wants while Ruby's off filming her vlogs and looking like a moron, filming other people's car accidents and stuff like that. That's what it sounds like. Could be wrong, but I mean, that's what my gut tells me. To the unhealthy point that I think it's time to walk away from it. Another big part of it that I'll just straight up admit is that the hate over the last year and a half has really honestly kind of sucked. So it started just as I turned 17 and now I'm 18 and a half. And it's been every single day on YouTube, on Instagram. Um, you know, I hear about it on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. And you know, at first it was funny because you know, it was just so blatantly false what people were saying. I'm probably in this category, by the way, everybody, but Nothing I've said about them is false. I stick to my guns, the exploitation. And maybe, I kind of get it though. I sort of understand what she's saying here. It still is, but I think reading it every single day for over a year um, really starts to take a toll on somebody. It really does, getting hate. And who is showing, throwing hate at the kids? I don't know. It's definitely not me. I did make fun of them for the milk and the cake, but that's not. The thing that pisses me off is that it's never their fault, but they've been put into this world and now look what they have to suffer through. Again, our kids should never have to be put into a place where this happens to them. Is it their fault? Absolutely not. Is it the parents' fault? Sort of. Obviously it's the, it's the people's fault who make fun of them and do videos about them like that, but it's actually a, a twofold. It's the people who are willing to go hate her and it's the parents who are willing to put her out there to receive the hate. The hate is there. So if you knew as a parent that there's a pool of hate waiting out there for your kids and the way that those haters are going to come after your kids is by putting them online. Would you put them online knowing that that would happen? Would you? No, like no, but no parent worth their salt would. And I firmly believe that offense is a choice that you choose to be offended. And I stand by that, and I still believe it to be true. Oh, also, I got to talk about this for a second. I don't know why she reads the forums, why she reads the things. Just ignore it. Like, again, she's been put in this world of social media, and she made a lot of money off it. But at the same time, she had to go through all this stuff, and she said she reads it for years. That is going to take a massive, massive hit. So hopefully she can get away from this family, get off the internet, and probably live for And she will. I think she's very much, she's young enough now that if she gets off this channel, doesn't show her face on there a lot, gets off her own YouTube channel, because she could just get off and go. And that's really cool that she has that future ahead of her. A lot of people don't have that option, right? A lot of people don't. Like, at least uh, Ruby's husband works at BOE. They makes a lot of money. They have they, they could stop blogging and they'd be okay, right? But that, that's privilege they have. A lot of people don't have that. But I like you think about like people like Jess Fam, um, Weiss Life, uh, Austin, the Ace family, uh, LeBrance. None of them have jobs. So if YouTube fell apart for any of these people, all of them would be screwed. That's the craziest thing. I think that just there's this vibe or energy that comes with that um, of just having constant hate that really does start to wear down on somebody. Yes, and it does. Yes, so it for does. for that reason, I turn off my comments on Instagram except for to people I follow. I mm -hmm. might turn off my YouTube comments in the next couple She should. She should just get off YouTube. Well, days, just depending on how things go. But I need to also take a step back from that and just reading all of that because it's... Can you imagine being a teenager and your life is being on YouTube? Like I'm, I have to spend a ton of time reading comments and liking and going through as, cause I like to be in tune with who, with people who are watching me. Imagine being a teenager, not having a normal life already and then having to live your life, sifting through comments that hate you. The parents should have stepped in a long time ago and said, shut that shit off. Up until the point she was 18 anyway. Shut it off, don't let anybody comment on that. Don't even put her out there like that. That should have been on the parents. It's enough for anyone to handle, but I think especially someone so young, it's not something that anybody deserves or anything that. Exactly. And so again, I asked the question, if you knew your kid was gonna go there and get a bunch of hate, or was already getting a bunch of hate, what is your first inclination as a parent? 
take them away from that danger. That's my inclination. My daughter's out there. My son's out there getting hate on the internet. I'm going to find a way to make sure he doesn't, right? I'm going to find a way to get him off that platform. Being, this is not for you. Her, her parents d d seemingly did nothing about it. That's insane to me. Um, anyone should have to go through. I've always known that YouTube isn't what I'm supposed to do with my life. Um, I've always kind of viewed it as a stepping stool into something else. I'm definitely grateful for the things that YouTube has taught me. Um, I have a skill set that I wouldn't have learned anywhere else. I guess is that editing or filming? I don't know. I I've looked at. With I've worked with contracts for years. I've worked with big businesses. Oh, she's talking about like getting <laughs> advertisement. This girl's made money on this platform, like more money than most adults have ever made. She's made lots of money on this. So hopefully it's paying for school. Hopefully she just goes by the house, gets out. Good for her. Get out of there. I'm pretty sure she has to leave anyway. She's 18. Marketing, advertising, like all this stuff that I wouldn't have learned anywhere else. I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity and it's definitely helping me with other jobs that I'm working on right now. And I've also met some really amazing people and most of you I haven't even met. Um, Good, don't meet people from the internet, don't do it. But a lot of you have had a great impact on my life and I'm sure that you guys feel the same way. Um, so I will still be on Instagram, I'll still be posting and stuff, that'll kind of be where my updates are going on if you want to follow along. Uh, my Instagram username is down in the description box again comments will probably be off for the next please turn them off turn them off foreseeable future but if you want to follow along that's where the best place to do it will be there's definitely going to be some downsides leaving you two um there's always consequences obviously for everything that we do um but i think that the benefits outweigh those um so that's you imagine being 18 year old and having your head on like this it's definitely not ruby's doing that's for sure She's leaving behind potentially millions of dollars to say like, the hate's not worth it. I've n I don't know, I could do it. I don't know, I don't know a lot of people who would make that choice. Again, they have a lot more privilege so they can, she has a lot more options than most people. That is saying something. Another reason why I'm choosing to be done with this. Again, like I said, I'm not completely leaving it. Like you'll still see for me, it just will definitely be a small fraction of the time. Um, that I've been on. So I guess in closing, I'll just say thank you all so much for the last, how many years has it been? Like six, it's been more than, six, like probably six years. So she's saying she's been doing her own YouTube channel since she was 12. Well, you gonna let your 12 year old do a YouTube channel and be put out there for the world to see for hate and predators? That is a, that's a parenting fail. Right, that's a huge parenting fail. Stop putting kids on the internet. Holy, how many times I have to say that? Um, you guys have all been amazing. I think another thing I realized was that I am still trying to make content that like 14 year old Sherry would have made. Um, and I'm not 14 anymore, I'm 18. And one thing that's really hard with YouTube or really just social media in general is that once you find kind of a niche mm -hmm. or yep. you know an area that you've built your brand around, it's really hard to change that to something. Looking at you, Jojo Siwa, and your ugly bows. Else. And so while trying to make content that people would like, I have been doing that by making content that I don't like. And I mean, it sounds super obvious saying it out loud that that's probably not something you should do. Um, but it's something I've been doing, I think, for at least a year now. So she's just admitting here, I've been putting out fake shit I didn't like just for money. I mean, she's... <laughs> If anybody, this is the most honest vlogger I've ever seen in my life. She's just like, I do this because this makes money. Ruby Frank, Eight Passengers, all these family vloggers, they do this to make money. And again, there's nothing wrong with making money on YouTube, everybody, but there is something wrong with exploiting your kids for money. That's it. But like, be honest. And again, influencer culture, it's all lies. It's all the best reels of their lives or and what isn't even their lives. It's just planned things. When you're like, oh, we're gonna do this thing to show everybody how amazing we are, that isn't even actually a real life experience. That is a script, that's a scripted life. And these kids have lived in a scripted life for what, 10 years? She's lived most of her life scripted. That is really, really scary. That's gonna be, affect her relationships in the future. It's gonna affect who wants to be with her. It's gonna affect a lot of things. Her friends, they're all going to be able to look back and see all that stuff, and maybe they'll be fine with it. And most, uh, likely they will be. But again, that's a scripted life. Can you imagine living your entire life scripted? There's a lot that she has missed out on. A lot of relationship part, a lot of 
important relationship things with her parents she's missed out on, a lot of important friendships she's probably missed out on. It's just, this is a sad vlog. And I'm interested in things like law and reading and stuff that I don't think most people are interested in. And that's totally okay. Like, we all have different interests, but it's just something that I don't think I can keep doing is making content that I don't enjoy. I guess in closing, again, just thank you all so much for your support over the years. Um, and I'll say this to everybody, to people that hate me and to people that love me. If you hate this girl, you're a piece of shit. Let's be real. What would you have? What reason do you have to hate this girl? If you're going to hate somebody, hate her parents for putting her shit on the internet. Who hates her? That's bullshit. Um, I hope you all find what you're looking for, whatever that be in life. And I also know that there's a God above who knows what we say and how we treat people. And that one day we'll stand accountable for how we treated others. Wow. Not in your religion. Sorry. Your religion is bullshit. <laughs> So don't listen to that. She's going to be held accountable to like the bishop or some shit halfway through. Joseph Smith's going to judge her. We'll talk about that another day, but no, that's BS what she's saying. It's both on social media and in person. And we'll also stand accountable for the way we treated ourselves, which is why I need to step away so I can take better care of myself as well. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Again, I think there'll be one more video after this um, that's already edited, but after that, the next video you'll probably see of me will be in my dorm room. So again, if you want to stay- Again, so you're not getting off YouTube or you are or what? I don't know. Up to date with me, um, Instagram would be the best place to do it, but thank you guys all so much for watching. You're all amazing. Mm, I'll see you later. A couple things. So it's a smart young lady who has decided that 478,000 subscriber channel is about to just like take a dump. She's like, I'm done with it. And I can't believe it because that's amazing. She has, she averages. So that video, she put 118,000 views. It's big money right there, by the way. But for a channel this large, she doesn't average a ton of, ch uh, ton of views. Um, yeah, and she's talking about making content um, for teenagers. Yeah. Some of the big ones, like, let's sort through here. And I don't even want to look at the, the demographics of this because I know it's going to piss me off. But her most popular video is huge scar reveal. $2.2 million of her with her belly showing again. If you don't think her parents have a big role to play in this channel, you're wrong. They absolutely did. Second one, period kit shopping for first time with sister. 1.8 million views. Vlogging the first day of school, 1.5 million. And then period talk again. Teaching my sister how to shave her armpits. What's in my back? This, so what I'm seeing here is that Sherry has been groomed and forced to do videos by her mom. Her mom, you don't. Do you think she just came up with these ideas? You think she made these these thumbnails? No, I'm sorry. This this is Ruby all over it. So the videos that get the most views are kind of more like into the. Like, I almost want to look at the demographics. I really do because I promise you, the demographics are going to be a lot of dudes watching this. And that's the scariest part of this. This is one thing I talk to you guys a lot about is that these important details of a child going through puberty and all that stuff should never, ever be put on the internet. It's not for, I, who was it that said they were, oh, it was um, Weiss Life. Gabrielle Weiss was told by her mom that doing these videos like bra shopping and periods and all this stuff helps single dads. And if you don't do it, those dads won't know how to do it. That's what she was told. Okay, and I have multiple, obviously, depending on what you who you want to listen to. It wasn't just her, her her biological father who said those things. It was other people. So, um, yeah, these things should just never be put out there. That's that's what I, I don't know what else to say. I I know I've talked to some family vloggers out there who are like, I'm not I'm not so so I don't have a major problem with putting my kids on, but I have a major problem with these types of videos, where who needs to be watching this? Who needs to see that? Not other teenage girls. I just, it's and because if it was just other teenage girls, I would agree with you. This channel is is not just a kid's channel, okay? It's a channel that's out there for adults to watch. And I promise you, if I went to the analytics of this, you would see that it's a lot of males watching it. And that's the danger. I mean, if it was just for kids, I'd say, okay. If it was just for teenage girls, I'd say, I understand that. Totally get it. But if there's a large demographic of men watching this, and I guarantee you there are. That's where I get, that's where it's, as a parent, I'd be like, nope. If my 12 year old, 13 year old, 14, 15, up to 18 is putting out videos like this and I know my my demographics in the back end and I see that the demographics are largely male or even, let's say even a 10% to 15% male adult, right? I would be like, nope, that's coming down. 
Okay. Because that's not, that's just not conducive to good parenting, to protecting your kids. And again, your kids should never have to have a thick skin, should never be callous to the world. How many kids do you know have got, who come on of <laughs> that, that say, I don't want to be on the internet because I get so much hate. That is so heartbreaking. And the fact that Ruby doesn't seem to care at all or at all is, is makes it even worse. So, wow. I opening video, Sherry Frank, you're probably watching this because you, you apparently do watch all your hate stuff and uh, no hate, no shame. You're really smart for what you're about to do here is, but to take off and go into your own world and do your own thing, stick to it. You might find that, you know, I want to make money quickly. Just don't just, I promise you, you know, you're going to be a lawyer probably. And you sound like a smart lady. You're going to make some good money anyway. Do it away from YouTube. Okay. Because I think, you know, in the end that when you, when you are done uploading and that you feel the less, when you take, when you take the pressure off and the hate comments, and everything, you're going to feel like a million bucks. And that video that you just shared is really important. And I think a lot of young ladies should watch that. To say, yeah, it all seems great. It all seems, I want to be a YouTuber. My, I've got my nephew now calling me and asking me if he can be a YouTuber. How do I do it? I'm like, well, here's how you do it. You wait till you're 18. <laughs> you know, old enough to make a choice that you can understand the future, right? So I know so many kids, like if you think about what, if you ask 100 kids right now between the ages of 12 and 16 what they want to be, I bet you half of them are going to say YouTuber because it's a lot of money and it's fame and it's easy. But that's, that video right that she made is one of the most important videos. If, you're, if your kids ever ask to be on YouTube or whatever the case may be, and maybe I should make a video, I've been promising you that for a while, um, that's a video you should watch. Yeah, it seems fine, but the amount of hate you're going to get is really scary, and you don't want it. Our kids should not be calloused. Our kids should not have to be forced to, our kids should not be forced to grow up faster, to en endure hate, because we're putting them out there. That's just so scary. Right? I want my kid to be innocent for as long as they can be innocent. I want them to be sheltered from the internet for as long as I can. I'm, and as I go through this world of parenting and find out and watching these people more and more, I've come to the conclusion I am not going to give my kids phones until they're at least 16. At least. And, and, and even then, if they don't feel like they're smart enough to handle it, then no. Okay? I think more parents need to step up and start putting and stop letting our kids have unfettered access to the internet. For like that's the internet is an effing dangerous place and it does shape our kids and we are a lot of us as parents are shirking our parenting responsibilities and letting the internet babysit our kids and letting the internet educate our kids. Okay? So let's let's be real. If you're a parent out there with a young kid who has an iPhone and is on the internet all the time, rethink how you're going to do that. It might be too far gone, but you should probably try to see if you can take a step back from that. That shit is dangerous. And we know it is. Everybody knows it is. We just don't want to talk about it. So anyway, wow. Parenting advice from dad. You're welcome. Get your Samson shirt at the Teespring store. I love it. My, when I, my band days, this used to say hearts and stereo, but that's Samson crushing the pillars. The guy who did this design is so amazing. Anyway, guys, take a deep breath. You're incredible. And if you're a parent out there struggling with these types of issues and you have teenagers and all that stuff, you are not alone. But please take to heart the idea of not allowing your kids to be calloused. Not to, they should not have a thick skin until they're at least in college, okay? Let college be the start of that. But I think that's a good place to, that's a good thing to land on. Let's protect our kids. Let's do that. And that's what we're doing here. And uh, regardless of whether or not you think I'm doing it for the right reasons or not, I don't care, because you're beautiful. You're amazing, and you are valuable. And you look really good today. Like, hey, did like a magical fairy just kiss you on the cheek? Because you look glowing. That's weird. Anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow.